Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, hope, I mean, that's that's really the that's really the most powerful image that we can share around the world is the plight of our people and our cultural integrity. You know, is held by our kupuna, and so uh, our goal, of course, is to expose that. You know, not just to Hawaii, but really to the rest of the world that uh, there's something rotten going on in Hawaii. Uh, whether it's David Lasner and the University of Hawaii who pimp out our lands to uh, you know, here is foreign entities, Japan, China, India, Canada, Caltech, all being protected and supported by the University of Hawaii, who lease who lease land from the so-called state of Hawaii who manages lands on so-called our, these are lands that belong to our people. We don't know, these are, these are our people's lands yet. We're fighting against a subleaser. Well, I think they got a sublease at this point. They didn't have one for a long time. But think about that. And the state of Hawaii <laughs> is using this large police and military force to threaten really our people, to subdue our people in a way, to really cause us to be um, tamed so they can continue on this, this process of um, exploiting our sacred sites, our lands, our waters in many ways to uh, these corporations. And that's really what's going on. You know, it's that um, they really don't want Hawaiians thinking and being Hawaiian because it's in direct conflict to the kind of exploitation and that kind of um, uh, greedy, um, self-righteous, uh, mentality that's, that's running rampant throughout the world. What you see in Hawaii is no different than what we just saw in Standing Rock. What you see going on in the unceded territories in Canada, those who are fighting the pipelines, whether it's the natives of Papua who are fighting the nickel and copper mines, or in Australia. I mean, this is something that's going around the world. And so um, we, we know the truth. We know we are under an illegal occupation. We know this land, this, in fact, this land we're right here on, this land belongs to us. I know none of the so-called investors in the TMT have any interest in these lands. But people, all of us here, all of us here, you see laying down here, we all have an undivided one-third interest as the vested rights of what's called the whole Aina in these lands. And so... Um, in fact, if you if you talk to me, we are, you know we're very educated. We are not people who are uneducated, and that's really why uh, we we understand we need to do this. We don't have any other choice but to at this moment in time, if we're going to live on as people, we have to demand our humanity. We can no longer be dehumanized by those who who refuse to accept that we all should be treated equal in this world. And and that's really what this is about, you know, the right for a people to be a people in their own homeland. Where else can Hawaiians be Hawaiians? Where else are Hawaiians going to have a sacred land? Where else are Hawaiians going to have waters and, and, and land and healthy land to grow food and, 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 you know, fish from the sea to fish, but from our own homeland? Um, but unfortunately, there are many greedy hands uh, who look at Hawaii as an economic opportunity for them or as a, as a military land base, or as a testing ground for their pesticides and insecticides, or for whoever the hell out there is out in the world wants to do as a, as a um, famous solar astronomer told me once, uh, Craig Fultz, Craig Fultz, Craig Fultz, and I always say don't make his name famous, and she told me it's pure selfish research. But you can see, for him, it's pure selfish features. For us, this is our dignity. This is our humanity. This is our homeland. And so, um, what you see going on is uh, is really just the beginning of a, of, a, of a rebirthing, of a restoration movement that's really going on. So, are we willing to fight on? Of course. So, this, the developers of the TMT, they better be ready. This is just day one. 
you know, they're talking 10 to 12 years of construction. What happens when we come back next week or come back next month? Are they going to be ready to bring all their security forces again? Does the state of Hawaii really want to put that kind of money and effort and energy to support these foreign investors and multinational corporations and, uh, you know, those who, who ignore who we are as, as a people, as human beings? I mean, we are human beings. We are people who belong to this land. And yet we get treated, we get treated as if it doesn't matter what we feel. It doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter that we have a history, a language, a culture. So that's why we're here, because we still live and we want to live on. A lot of faces I've seen for many years up there and back here. Yeah. yeah. And you can see, one of the interesting things is, this is how much of a Hawaiian issue the TMT is. If you were to look, in fact, if you look at the press statements they released yesterday, or in the past week from the various Hawaiian organizations and, and, and cultural uh, programs, you know, uh, many of us may not maybe agree many times in the political world and maybe sometimes be very contentious, but you'll see those same people that I've had a lot of um, strong debates perhaps about issues are virtually united. So what you see here, this is a very strong united front that's happening. And, um, and if you think this, you know, Uncle Walter's generation is strong and you see that kupuna they're representing, our generation, wait till you see the next generation coming. They better be really ready for them.